Hey y'all, it's me, Cecilia. Welcome back to my channel. So today, I know you already saw a video like this for me a couple weeks ago, but you know what? That video had been filmed and I just hadn't uploaded it. And so, you know what? We're going to redo this. I'm going to do my recent reads and watches Number two, I made the green tropical tea from the Spice and Tea Exchange. I really like this tea company and it's a really good tea. It's like, it's like a less bitter green tea, which I enjoy. If you don't know what my recent reads and watches um, videos are about, I will link my first one up above so you know what I'm talking about. But basically this is taking place of everything I consumed within September 1st to October 12th. So about six weeks and I read six books, three movies, and four TV shows. I know, I did a lot in six weeks. So we're gonna get into this. Sorry, I'm a little agitated because some stuff has been happening on Twitter and I'm just, I'm just upset, okay? But you know what? We're going to drink some tea, calm down a little bit, and we're gonna talk about some good books. I'm gonna talk about two at one time because they're the, both in the same series. So I figured I'd talk, talk about them at the exact same time. That is The Ancient Magnus Bride, volume one and two by Kor Yamazaki. Now these two, the Ancient Magnus Bride, I have fallen in love with this manga series. It takes our main, we have our main character named Cheese, Cheese? Cheesy? Cheesy? We call her Cheese. Cheese. I don't know. <laughs> Chize. Ch <laughs> well we have her. <laughs> Hi, editing me. So I just watched the first episode of the anime just to make sure that it was what, how to pronounce her name. It is Cheese. Chise. So, I'm sorry that I keep pronouncing it wrong during the rest of this video, but what you gonna do? Bought by Elias, and basically she, um, Elias is kind of like half fey, half human, I think. He's like a monster. He's got like a skeleton for a head. And he basically, um, intends to like teach, um, Chise to, um, be a mage. Um, and you kind of find out that, um, he intends to marry her. And... It's, it's great. It's, I really enjoy the series. It's like, it's nice and whimsical. It gives me such like fall vibes. I don't know. I'm in the, I'm in the fall vibes kind of mood. Can you tell by my flannel and my tea? It's fine. But it's such an interesting series. The characters in here are so cool and I'm really enjoying the world. You get to see little pockets of it in each volume and it's really interesting. I don't know how many volumes are out. I want to say there's about 13 out at the moment but I'm really excited to continue on. Um, I gave both of these volumes four stars. Next book uh, is big and I'm not going to hold it up for that long, but it's Romancing the Vampire from Past to Present by David J. Skull. Now this is, I linked, I put it as nonfiction, but I had actually gotten this from my dad's girlfriend um, for my birthday, so thank you for that. But um, this is basically a I'm gonna say like kind of like a history of vampires through kind of media. So you get to see a little bit of vampire lore and mythology, then it goes into kind of books that were written about vampires and then it transitions into movies. It's really interesting and also comes with all these really cool pop-ups. Like, let me show you. Oh my god. Some of these pop-ups are like actual posters which are super cool and then you get sometimes like this one you have like a movie a movie script a movie panel it's really interesting i really enjoyed reading this um this copy that i have right now is kind of falling apart so that was i guess one of my gripes but that's not the book's fault that's just this specific copy's fault but i really enjoyed this um i was listening also i was also reading this while listening to what is it called um, like a vampire playlist on Spotify and it just brought it just brought me in the mood and I this was really interesting and fun to read I read this also part of the um, monster thon read thon that I completely failed but it's fine but this was really good um, I give this one four stars as well next book I read was actually a poetry collection and that is the tradition by Jericho Brown this is a poetry collection that I just found randomly in the library. It was in the new book section and I was like, hey, let's check it out. Let's read it. And I really enjoyed the poetry. For me, how I enjoyed poetry is one, if it inspires me to write poetry, I enjoy writing poetry, but I typically only write poetry if I'm 
in like if I'm feeling any extreme emotions so extreme extreme happiness extreme sadness whatever any like a lot of emotion but I read this collection when I was more kind of more chill and mellowed out and I wasn't expressing a lot of emotion and I was still inspired to write poetry especially there's a new format that I have never actually really seen before in this collection that I really want to try out which was awesome. <laughs> um, a lot of the poetry really resonated with me as well. I really like this collection. I think I'm gonna buy this. Um, there's a, a copy available at the Doc Bookshop which is my favorite book, my favorite independent bookstore. But yes, I gave this poetry collection five stars. The next book I read, I listened to this on audiobook and it was The Chain by Adrian McKinty. McKinty? McKinty, yes. Um, this book was a, is an adult thriller. It is about our main character, Rachel. She is um, a divorced mom, single mom. Her daughter is about, I think, 12, 13, um, Kylie. And Rachel um, is just recovering from breast cancer and she's about to become a university professor. And she gets a call from this organization called The Chain. Now, The Chain, basically, there's a system where a kid or someone kidnaps someone in your family. You have to basically pay a ransom and kidnap another person in order to get your child back. And the cycle just continues like that. So again, it's like a chain. And uh, Rachel gets sucked into this. Kylie, her daughter is kidnapped and she has to figure out how to get her daughter back. Um, this book was interesting. Um, <laughs> I guess to start with the writing. The writing I was nice, interesting. To, it was good to it was easily absorbed. I don't know, it was audiobook, so I don't pay attention to the writing as much in when I'm listening to it on an audiobook. The audiobook narrator I enjoyed. Um, she was great. <laughs> the characters, I actually really enjoyed the characters. I thought we got to see a lot of innermost thoughts. We saw into the head of of Kylie, the daughter of Rachel, most of the time. We saw into the, char the main character, um, the person who is controlling the chain. Um, I'm not going to tell you who they are because that would be a spoiler. But, and we also saw into um, Pete, who is Kylie's uncle or Rachel's brother-in-law or ex-brother-in-law. So yeah, um, my, I guess, gripes with this book is that um, I think, I figured, so I guess I'm going to go into spoiler territory because all of my gripes are really spoiler related. So if you don't want to read the chain, you can skip to this timestamp on the on the screen so we'll talk about when I talk about the next book. But I think this book should have ended at the 61% mark, um, which is when Rachel got Kylie back, her daughter. Um, because after this point, it became a whole vendetta of trying to find out who was in charge of the chain and to bring them down. And I found that part really boring. I didn't care. <laughs> so I think it would have been interesting as either Kylie didn't or um, got back and it just kept saying like on like ambiguously like and the chain continues or like if Rachel and Kylie both died and it was like and the chain I don't know I like ambiguous endings so I, I would have thought that would be a little more preferable um the person you find out who um leads the chain was very obvious once they introduced that character which they don't introduce them until later in the book um but it was very obvious like I was just sitting there like oh it's probably them oh it's them wow what a shocker it was just so... Why? Why? The ending was kind of... It was a little too much of a happy ending f for me, personally. Um, I don't know, I just wasn't a fan. And the whole, like, shootout, murder, 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 kill, kill thing that happened at the end was not my fave. But also, this one thing. So, Kylie and Pete... Hi, editing me again. I think I need to clarify that I was talking about Rachel and Pete, not Kylie and Pete. Because... Rachel was 12 and 13. That would have been, this would have been a completely different discussion if it was that, but no, I'm sorry. I was being a dumb bitch when I was recording this, evidently. Have sex and become, and get into a relationship to the point where Rachel at the end becomes pregnant, which is like what you find out of the last page of the book. Does, did no one think this was weird? Because you see nobody, everyone seems okay with it. Do you, you think Kylie would have been like, oh yeah, my mom is dating my uncle. That's not weird at fucking all. Like, I know they're not blood related, but that's still weird. <laughs> that's still really fucking weird to me. I don't know what it is. And no one thought it was weird either. Not her ex-husband, not the daughter, neither of them. Well, they thought about it was weird for a second. They were like, eh, fuck it, let's just have sex. No. 
No. Keep your horny selves in your pants. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Nope. Okay. We're done. But I gave this book 3.5 stars. I still enjoyed my time reading it. The last book I read was a graphic novel and that was, this was, what? This was Our Pact by Ryan Andrews. This was an adorable middle grade graphic novel. Um, if you like Over the Garden Wall, which I will talk about later in this video, you will enjoy this graphic novel. Um, we follow uh, two characters. We follow Ben and Nathaniel. Um, ben, her, ben and Nathaniel's relationship is weird. Ben doesn't like Nathaniel. Um, he just kind of pretends that they're friends because their their dads are best friends. Um, and Nathaniel is kind of the, the um, I'm always on the positive side of everything, while Ben is more the pessimistic. So it's the night of the autumn equinox and Ben and his friends, not including Nathaniel kind of jumps in or and just joins them. But they have, a, um, Ben and his friends have a pact that um, basically in their town, they drop lanterns into the river on the autumn equinox because of this old legend. And they're always curious of where the lanterns actually go. Ben and Nathaniel kind of go on to this quest to find out where the lanterns go because all of Ben's buddies are idiots and they left. <laughs> and it gets really mystical and magical and it's it's such a fun book. Um, I like to, if I had to give this like a, a, like a tagline, I would say this is over the garden walls, but more astrology. Not like zodiac, but like the moon, the stars, the planets, constellations. There's actually zodiacs and stuff in it. But again, over the garden wall book with astrology and astronomy. It was so cute and fun and I, I picked this up on a whim at the library and this was such a great idea. Um, I really think you guys should read this but the, yes I gave that four stars. Now I'm going to talk about the three movies that I watched during this time period. So the first movie I read was Real Injun. Hi so I kind of realized that I really didn't explain this movie very well so I just kind of deleted that footage and I figured I would just talk to to you guys more about it now. So Real in June is more about the uh, portrayal of indigenous people in the media. So more specifically towards movies and how um, who has represented them represented represented them in the past. So it starts off from like when movies began all the way up until about when the movie came out, which was about 2009. Um, and you really got to see the progression of um, being fascinated with the culture into um, large stereotypes, into savages, into the more realistic portrayal of indigenous people now. I really enjoyed the film. I <laughs> I pirated it, so like we'll just we don't need to talk about that. Um, I really enjoyed the film. Um, I wish I would see more like of what how the portrayal is now because they really don't know much about that. But of course, since it came out in two thousand nine, I can't hold. The movie accountable for that but I really like this film I think this would be perfect for people to watch during um indigenous um people's month or which is I believe in November yeah which is in November so this is a really great film um I gave this one four stars next movie I watched I actually watched all of these movies on the same day I just realized that but the next movie I watched was Knock the House Down I watched this on Netflix and this was really good this um followed the journey of four women um in like the political sphere, um, all basically trying to get into either the House of Representatives or the Senate, um, or just trying to get into just like politics in general. Um, usually since they're all, they were all from grassroots organizations and a lot of them were trying to not overthrow, but kind of like replace the incumbent who was in that position before, who was not really doing very well. Um, all of their incumbents were men, by the way. And uh, I really enjoyed this. At first I found it very empowering, which was always great. I knew a little bit about each of these, um, each of the women, but I haven't like gone too much into it. So you got to see um, what, how they were, what they were doing in their grassroots organizations, what they, how, what the struggles and turmoil they felt in and whether if they actually got in, like won their primaries and, or won their elections. and. One did, and it was great. Oh my gosh, I would never cheered so well. Even though I already knew, I was still I was still happy and excited and cheered. So, I really enjoyed this film. I think a lot of people should definitely watch it. Also, y'all go vote. Um, I have to check if I'm still eligible to vote. Because since I moved states, I don't know if you have to re-register if you move states or if it just does it for you. 
I'm gonna have to check that after this video. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed this film. I gave this one five stars. Next one I watched was Bill Nye Science Guy. <laughs> this was also on Netflix. This is a documentary about Bill Nye the Science Guy. So if you're like me who grew up on his TV show, like in science classrooms, Bill Nye is one of the reasons why I love science today. One of the reasons why I am pursuing science as my major in college. I love Bill Nye. <laughs> I listen to his podcast as well, so of course I'm a little biased. This movie, or this documentary, has two parts that are kind of interwoven through. One part is talking about basically what Bill Nye has been doing since the TV show ended. Um, a little bit about the TV show, a little about his personal life, and about what he's been doing. Um, and all that stuff. We got to see him. I, there was a part where we saw him and Neil deGrasse Tyson hug and just hang out and drink wine, which was the greatest scene ever. <laughs> I was so excited. I was so happy. I don't know. I'm fa Why am I fangirling about Neil deGrasse Tyson in Bill Nye? And then <laughs> the other half was about Bill Nye's like personal, not vendetta, but like mission to debate climate change deniers, which at some points felt a little a little much. Sometimes I'm like, okay, chill. Bill, chill. I get it. I don't need half of this documentary to talk about you going into, like, fighting this one dude. It was always, not always, it was between these two two guys. I don't remember their names. But at some points I was like, Bill, just drop it. Just drop it. But I really enjoyed this film. I gave this one four stars. Now to talk about the TV shows. Cool. I watched four shows, by the way. I know. Um... None of them are anime. I've been so lacking on anime lately. I don't know. First show we'll be talking about is Hilda season one. This is on Netflix and I really like the show. <laughs> we follow our main character Hilda and she, I'm gonna say is really into with nature. She grew up in the woods so um, she has a little deer fox and um, she loves to adventure and go out and basically interact with kind of the mystical beings around her. And um, the first couple of episodes of her, are her and her mom living in the woods, but then they move into Trollberg, which is um, the city, and her kind of adjusting into that kind of lifestyle. And it's so good. It's so good. I didn't really like how the end of this season ended up with her and her and her friends. I, there was this one character that I liked her all the way up until this one part at the end, and I'm like, you little shit. But this was a really good show. Um, again, fall vibes, <laughs> if you liked it. The mystical beings were really interesting. I liked hearing about the trolls, the ghosts, big bird spirit. Um, it was really interesting. Um, I think you guys will like this one. I gave this one five stars. Next show I watched was Over the Garden Wall. I watched this on Hulu, all of the episodes on Hulu. And I watched this almost all in one day. I watched it in two days. Um, literally the epitome of fall vibes are is in the show. Um, you follow, you follow Wirtz and Greg, and, um, they basically got lost in the woods trying to go home. And you follow this, like, entire, I think it was 12 episodes, 12 10 minute episodes of them trying to go home, and you eventually found out how they got lost, and you see all of the mythical people, or the creepy people and mythical beings along their way. It was so, so good. I remember hearing a lot of people talk about this show, and I was like, but is it really that good? It's really that good. The music was so chef's kiss. It was just beautiful. Um, the atmosphere really in, like made me feel creeped out. The, the, um, the beast of the night creeped the shit out of me. And I'm a 21 year old woman. Um, <laughs> why a children's show is creeping me out? I don't know. Uh, but it was really... I already kind of really want to rewatch it. What am I doing? I literally watched it like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. I need to chill. <laughs> I really like this. Um, you guys should watch this one. I gave this one five stars as well. The one, that, only one that was a little disappointing for me, and this was Disenchantment season two. Um, I watched season one, and I thought it was good. Um, I enjoyed it. This one, I think, at some points I, l I liked it more than season one, but at some points I liked it less than season one. I'll talk about how season one went. So um, we also basically follow Bean. She is a princess in this castle and we follow um, basically her two best friends, um, Lucy who is a demon and then we follow Alpho who is an elf who left 
Dreamland, which is where like Dreamland. No, who left? Who left? Like kind of the Elfin Kingdom, um, because he was tired of it. And um, they basically all live in Dreamland, and it's fun and it's enjoyable. I think the reason why a lot of people uh, haven't been enjoying the show or why there are a lot of people disappointed in it is because they're comparing it too much to The Simpsons and Futurama because Matt Groening um, also wrote those two shows and as someone who Futurama is my favorite show of all time um, you think I would hate it more but I don't you just why I enjoy it is because you just need to remove it remove the past works if you take out The Simpsons and Futurama it's good because once you add those two of course Disenchantment isn't going to be as good as those two obviously this isn't the new Futurama my guys but this show is so interesting it takes like the little fantasy elements and it just it turns them around a little it was interesting there's like a couple things I can't even think of why I didn't like it I think I was just underwhelmed um, I'm still gonna keep watching <laughs> I'm still gonna keep watching because I, I, I the thing I really like about the show is that I do like really enjoy the characters because I don't know I see a little bit of myself in Bean and Alpho and Lucy for that matter. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I can hang out with them and have a, and enjoy like a nice drunk night with them. Like it's just they seem like cool cool dudes, you know what I mean? They they seem cool, which just makes me like to see them. The side characters are not my favorite, and some of the um, plot moments they have are not the best. But if you like the characters, they're little assholes, but if you enjoy the characters, then I think you will like the show. I give the season three stars. And the last thing I'm going to be talking about is the Patriot Act by Hazan Minaj. I watched the last season, I don't know, they break it up. My my TV watching app breaks everything weird, so it, it broke up the last six episodes as a season, so we'll just go with that. But basically, if you watch like the Daily Show, um, Past or Present, um, it's kind of like that, but except each episode is specific, like talks about a specific event. So there was an episode talking about how um, the unionization of the game in industry. There's an episode talking about um, the war on drugs, but more specifically about um, Petronol. Petronol? I think it was Petronol. And talking about different aspects. I learned a lot about these in these episodes, but I also found them really funny. I, I, Hassan Minaj is a really funny dude. And I found these all like super interesting. Um, it's on Netflix. So if you want to learn more about the different topics, um, it's something that you don't need to watch literally. So if you don't care very much care about an episode that is being talked about, you can always skip it. But I think this is really helpful, especially if you live in America. There was also an episode where they talked about Justin Trudeau and um, the Canadian, what's it called? The Canadian um, election that's coming up which I don't know if you can get the show in Canada, but if you have a VPN, then you can you could wiggle your way around that. But yeah, I really enjoyed um, this show. I'm definitely going to keep watching. I think they're coming out with new episodes in November, so I will be there for that. But yeah, I gave the show four stars. So yes, guys, that was my recent reads and watches. Um, let me know if you have read or watched any of the things I I've talked about in this video. And that's it for today, guys. I will see you in another video. Peace.